Hello everyone, my name is Raccoon Bro VA, and welcome back to another reaction video. Uh, I'll be honest, I know that you guys are probably going to ask me to do this one later on down the line, so I'm getting ahead of you. I'm doing this one in advance. And besides, uh, Kung Fu Panda is pretty much, might be top three, if not my favorite DreamWorks films. One of my favorite animated movies from when I was a kid, and it still holds up incredibly. And uh, so I'm very happy to see somebody praising it, especially the good old Crab Man. And hey, who knows? I I said in a community post, I'm halfway through editing that Death Battle review. I haven't gotten to Iron Vist versus Poe yet, so maybe I'll find a soundbite from this review that will fit the entry transition. <laughs> you never know. So, with all that being said, let's get into uh, the mayhem. Form ...to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. It <laughs> has been a hot minute since I made a love letter to a DreamWorks film. It has. Like, I think the last one was in December 2020. Oh my god. Yeah, we should probably get another one going. Let's see here. Watch Shrek. Eeny, meeny, miny, you. you. The universe has brought us my next Yay. DreamWorks analysis video. What? What? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> so, uh, Kung Fu Panda is really that good. That was great. Like, really great. It's... Like, extremely excellent. It, like, it's incredibly unfair how good amazing it is. in ways you would never guess if you haven't seen it before. From the tight screenplay with hardly any wasted scenes, to the unbelievably stellar fight choreography and overall It doesn't direction, make sense how good yeah, this movie I'm is, really. Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable calling this film a masterpiece. Thank I've you. I've been prone to overuse that term in it the is, past, though. I will admit. But here we have a shockingly ambitious film yeah. that lives up to all of said ambitions <laughs> and undoubtedly oh, deserves the too masterpiece many great label scenes to count. in my eyes. I think most people, and especially most people who watch my channel, already know this. But I also think it's about time I take a deep dive into yeah. Why this movie is as amazing as it is. Uh, and we'll get to the other two eventually, don't you worry. I just figured I'd start one of these DreamWorks retrospective series. This one is still my favorite, but change, you know, I woke up second and third are still sort of great today for some reason. And there was no way in hell I was doing the entire trilogy in one video like yeah. what you requested. Because there's way too much to say about each individual film to do that. This isn't like Madagascar where my entire analysis boils down to this one <laughs> is funny and this one is not funny. Did True. it laugh? The thematic Did depth of laugh. each installment in the funny Jablinski Games Panda movie trilogy <laughs> is incredibly significant and truly Nirvana, a baby. So let's finally dive into the first movie proper. Starting with... The reveal of what's on the Dragon Scroll. Yeah, we're just gonna get that out of the way right now. Oh, fair enough. And it's... <gasps> Squarespace! Yeah. So that's the secret ingredient to building an amazing website. Who knew? Uh, yeah, let me talk about Squarespace some more now. And then we will get to funny panda moments. Squarespace is a fantastic, intuitive, online website builder that allows you to create beautiful websites for your business or personal hobby. Present While he's your work doing this, I'm gonna put on some chapstick so that I'm not Display constantly licking my lips. Display projects and galleries and add password-protected pages to share private works with clients. You can even present your videos from YouTube, Vimeo, Vimeo and Animoto on your Squarespace site. Add an image overlay to your video to improve your website's load speed by waiting to embed video players until playback starts. Every design automatically includes a unique mobile presence that matches the overall style of your website, so your content will look great on every device, every time. And if you don't want that, you can always disable the mobile view from Website Manager. Buying a domain from Squarespace is so simple because there are no hidden will I edit or that price out? hikes. Each domain comes with an ad-free parking page I, I mean, and free WHOIS privacy on eligible <laughs> websites. One like dot art percent off your topic of discussion of a website or domain. Okay, now back to the movie. Yes. Our first topic of discussion is the funny. We might as well kick things off with one of the simplest aspects of the movie to talk about. The funny. Oh, yeah, this movie's very funny. What I like about the humor here is that it could have so easily gone into typical DreamWorks fart poop humor bullshit nonsense. Because it's a fat I panda. I mean, you got a movie where Jack Black <laughs> is a big fat panda. How easy would it have been to just make the panda fart and have that be the humor? We did it, guys. Yay! Comedy is saved. But yeah, Kung Fu Panda doesn't do that because it's a Chad movie that actually writes and tells jokes. A lot of the humor comes from Poe's boundless enthusiasm 
enthusiasm for kung fu, despite <laughs> his lack of skill or talent, as well as the contrast between his laid-back lifestyle and the rigorous attitude of Shifu and the Five. The contrast even works well between Po and Tai Lung. Mm -hmm. One scene that always cracks me up is when Po has to reach the Dragon Scroll, so he imagines it as a cookie. Tai Lung is completely oblivious to this fact, however, and assumes that the scroll has given him power! No! It's a very funny little moment that also speaks to how much people underestimate Poe's unique abilities. Hmm. Not only are the jokes as written pretty funny, but the entire cast has such good comedic timing, and they make so much of the humor land. Jack Black is excellent as Poe, and really breathes life into the character, making him his own. It's such a match made in heaven, and mm -hmm. I can't imagine anyone else playing this character. It's custom made for him, really. It doesn't feel like a lame celebrity stunt casting like most Seth Rogen roles do, and oh yeah, Seth Rogen's in this movie. Okay, let's just move past that. He's, Never mind. He's fine. He's, he's inoffensive in this. It's just whatever. It's Meh. I think Ian McShane's performance as Tai Lung is really underrated. It's not only menacing, oh, but he also fantastic. does a great job with the larger-than-life comedic scenes. There's a reason why, finally, a worthy opponent, our battle will be legendary! Became a meme, after all. James Hong as Mr. Ping? Yes! Come on, man! I, I love can't that get man. enough of his voice. It's so distinct and energetic and He's always and played funny. him in all the different spin-offs. and soup is just so infectious. You can feel the passion James Hong brings to every role. And this one is no exception. Lastly, I wanted to highlight Randall Duck Kim, because his delivery really does add a lot to the surprisingly effective comedic moments with Oogway. This turtle boy may be the wise old mentor figure, but he's also allowed to have his fair share of kooky moments that endear us to his character without ruining the tone of important scenes. One of my <laughs> favorite examples is when he's like, There is just news. Oh, yeah, that's a great no one. Only for Shifu to tell him that Tai Lung escaped, with his response being, That is bad news. <laughs> if you do not believe that the dragon warrior can stop him. This joke works so well because it's a funny reaction we didn't expect from Oogway, but after a comedic <laughs> pause, he continues the sentence and reveals that he's not actually contradicting his previous stance. Aww. Attention funny joke that also does not undermine the character. That's great. Another example is when Shifu asks him who the dragon warrior is, and he just responds with, I don't know. Because, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't Monkey. yet. That's what the ceremony they immediately hold right afterwards is for. Even during his silliest scenes, the movie always maintains Ugwe's wise persona and doesn't contradict it's so himself, well written. how it's done. So yeah, the movie has a pretty good sense of humor. It's not the all-time funniest DreamWorks film or anything, but it still has a lot of good laughs talk about and Dustin memorable Hoffman. line deliveries that really stuck with me to this day. But that's not really the Fair main enough. appeal of this movie. Of course. Let's talk about... The fight scenes! Yeah, baby, let's go! Bro, how are the fights in this movie so good? Like, what the hell? I legit don't even know where these intense... Ripping, uh, utterly phenomenal action sequences came from. Thank you, Dreamworks storyboarders. Dreamworks never really been known for action before. Prior to this point, they've just kind of been the funny haha -ha Shrek guys. I guess the Shrek movies have had some action yeah, a little in them, bit. but nothing on this level. Like, we love the I Need a Hero sequence for the music, the story tension, the humor, all that jazz. Yeah. Phenomenal scene, but it's not, not like the like actual fighting. battle choreography is anything yeah. special. But this movie is just, oh, but god yes. damn. It combines all of that with actual action. With animated animals. In fact, looking into the movie's development, it was first conceived as a spoof movie before John Stevenson, one of the directors, retooled it to be more of a character-based wuxia comedy. Obviously, Thank this you. was an excellent choice, since DreamWorks already had a big spoof franchise in the form of Shrek. And I doubt Kung Fu Panda would be looked upon as fondly if it was just <laughs> Shrek again, but a but martial it's a arts parody instead of a fairy tale parody. In an interview, Stevenson stated, Our choice was not to do the parody or the simplistic comedy. We said, Let's take Kung Fu Panda, which is an idea everybody gets comedically, <laughs> but then let's try and surprise everybody by giving them more movies. That's what makes than it so cool! From the title. Let's try to make it a real martial arts movie, albeit one with a comic character, and let's take our actions yeah. seriously. You can let's have a serious movie with a comedic character as the main movies. person. Let's really make sure that our Kung Fu is as cool as any Kung Fu ever done, <laughs> so that we can take our place in that canon and make sure it's a beautiful movie. Because great martial arts movies are really beautiful looking movies. And then let's there see are too if many we can animated ones, especially like in Western regions. hopes that maybe when people uh, see regions. the movie, they'll be surprised that they get a bit more movie than they may be expecting from the title. Needless to say, I, I want they succeeded. That is like Kung that Kung whole 2D sequence coming. I mean, come on. Film DreamWorks had ever made from an animation standpoint, <laughs> and you can tell that just by looking at it. The sheer effort it took to choreograph these fight scenes, to make sure the kung fu was fast and dynamic and exciting, while also maintaining a resemblance to real life martial arts. I truly do not envy these animators, man. <laughs> but 
thanks in no small part to the top-notch direction, they really pulled nah, through they, and delivered they some really beyond did come through, incredible man. sequences that I still feel Bless are a them. bit slept on by the general public, despite how well-received this movie was. Like, I'm shocked animation Twitter does not pop the f*** off <laughs> every other week, talking about the stellar choreography, camera work, lighting, and feeling of overall awesomeness at play <laughs> during every one of this movie's action sequences. Prior to his prison escape, Tai Lung is talked about as someone to be feared. But then we actually get to the, the prison, prison and we see how impossible is what it must makes be to get it, out of here. It's what makes so him such a great and memorable a villain. Guards and only one prisoner. Because one way it's in, like, one way out. My God. And he's chained up in a giant turtle shell contraption. He'll never get away. Oops, he got away. But the way he gets away is just... Oh man, I'm still geeking out about it. He uses a single feather to unlock the pressure points in his shell. A feather he only got a hold of because Shifu sent a messenger bird to the prison to make sure he didn't escape. Shifu's actions inadvertently caused this whole exactly. debacle, which Ugwe did try to warn him about. One often meets his destiny on the road yep. he takes to avoid it. Everyone knows how that line foreshadows Shifu's contributions to Tai Lung's escape. But I personally think you can even feel the echo of it when Tai Lung is trapped by these heavy weights, only to break free thanks to the crossbows firing at him and breaking his chains. <laughs> yeah, maybe you guys should have just not shot at him since he was still trapped, but oh well, live and learn. Mm. Assuming these guys did live, because I don't know, I think they might have all died in this fight. Some of those... Anyway, wordlessly, we get to see... I feel like some of them had to have died, at least. But no, it's like... It's such a great scene because he's constantly uh, adapting and coming up with on-the-fly strategies to get out and just reacting to people, like, trying to keep him... But by trying to keep him more locked in, they inadvertently help him out because he's such a quick thinker. Ai Lung's ingenuity at work. Using the crossbow ammunition oh, that, to that crack so is he can himself upward. And then this fucking yes! shot, man. The contrasting colors between him and the arrows. The immensely satisfying sound when they all hit the elevator. Just, oh god, it goes so hard. Boom. I'm not going to do a play-by-play -play of everything in this fight scene. Don't worry. But I just can't stress enough how flippin' cool all of it is. The movie sets up the sheer improbability of anyone escaping this you, place. You could make a whole video talking about this entire quick scene. Work of every trap in his way and every guard unfortunate enough to cross his path. <clears throat> it even manages to be stunningly epic while also keeping the comedic tone intact. Like when he stuffs a mace in this guy's mouth and cartoonishly <laughs> sends him flying. In the time it takes this guy to fly God, through the air, so cool. Tylon has already taken out like 10 other guys on ground he level. Reaches he then him catches there. this guy and throws him into another guy. I had to play this at 0.5 speed just to make sure that's what i was seeing just was. who choreographed this and can we give them a gold medal can <laughs> animating unbelievably stellar fight scenes be an olympic sport now this scene <laughs> is the moment where the movie proves it's more than what it was letting on it's more than just a cute goofy haha -ha, funny jack black panda comedy it's a goddamn real ass kung fu movie and it deserves to be recognized as such. Ugh. I'll fully admit that the action in this movie, hell, in the entire trilogy, really, does kind of peak with this scene, but it's not a huge gap. Yeah, the fair other enough. fight scenes in this movie are definitely up to the same standard, and they only barely fall short of this one. Like, the it's bridge like, come scene on. is just so phenomenal. It's just so it's great. It's such a creative and precarious location for a battle to take place at. You're constantly fearful that these characters are Location, fall location, into the location. Abyss. Plus, Tai Lung's ferocity That's is even more potent That's such an important part of fight scenes. Than it was in the last battle. Between him slamming Tigress across the boards on the bridge and choke holding her with the ropes, oh. you just remain incredibly fearful of what he's capable of, even when the five theoretically should hold the advantage. They even still keep the humor intact, with Viper forcing yeah. Tai Lung to hit himself, and Mantis inexplicably being left alone on rope oh, what was I It's thinking? just such an incredibly thrilling action set piece that concludes with an absurd display of Tai Lung's abilities. Well, like, for real, how did he do that? It's also a great showcase for one of my favorite little details about the Furious Five. The fact that they're all based on real-life martial arts yeah. techniques, meaning the animal they are Thanks actually for teaching me that one, death their battle. fighting style. It's just so cool, man. Oh my god. They're so cool, they're so cool, they're so cool! As for the <laughs> next major fight in the film, Shifu versus Tai Lung, we'll talk about that one later, since yeah. it's less about the stellar action and more about the amazing character drama the confrontation delivers. Good choice. But for now, let's move on to that final confrontation final. between Poe and fight. Thailand. It's the goofiest and most loosely choreographed out of all the fights in this movie, which makes perfect sense since Poe's brand of kung fu is so unconventional. But the creative ways he keeps the scroll out of Tai Lung's hands, <laughs> utilizing everything in his general vicinity and calling back to previous got home field advantage, training, is a really nice touch. 
I always particularly liked how he hid the scroll under a bunch of pots and mixed them all up as a callback to when Shifu did that with his dumpling. See, there, Poe actually played along with Shifu's game and found it the way he was supposed to, <laughs> while Tai Lung takes the easy way out and just knocks all the pots away because he lacks <laughs> patience and doesn't want to abide by the rules of the game. And because he's evil and shit. That is very, that is very OG Dragon Ball, I will tell you right now. It reminds me a lot of the whole Goku trying to get the sacred water from, uh, I forget his name. Oh well. It's a nice way you know, of the, showing the, the, the contrast cat guy. between the two characters. Overall, I think what this scene does best and meanwhile, is make it mercenary believable Tao that Poe could beat tries Tai to take Lung a shortcut. using all of his unconventional and unexpected tactics. Considering how Tai Lung wins every single battle he's in over the course of the film, the concept of our flabby panda buddy successfully taking him out at the end seems less and less and possible. Yeah. But this fight really sells the concept that Poe could eke out a win without nerfing Tai Lung in the process. Hmm. Especially because Tai Lung kinda wins at first, yeah. knocking Poe down and getting the scroll only to realize That's very that important. To realize. Shit. Knowing that the limitless power he hoped to acquire all his life was a lie, he's probably not in the best mental state during this final confrontation, and Poe can easily take advantage of his blind rage. It's ultimately a very effective final confrontation that trades in some of the more <laughs> visceral action from earlier yep. in exchange for a wonderful expression of what makes Poe special. Oh, Speaking it's so good! Po his specialness, I'd like to talk about him and his Boom. wonderful journey over the course of the movie. Because he has a little something called imposter syndrome. I sense the dragon oh, warrior I feel is that. among us. Among us! That is impossible! Okay. I'll give you that one. I touched one. upon this briefly in my Shrek 2 analysis from many, you. many years ago. But one of the central oh, themes yeah. of Kung Fu Panda is that of imposter syndrome. You know, it's funny. Is I didn't actually Skyward know there was music? a name for imposter syndrome back when I wrote the Shrek 2 script. Despite having it all my life. And in a post-Amogus <laughs> world, I wish I didn't know the name for it and could live in blissful ignorance. <laughs> but that time has passed. Anyway, while I do think imposter syndrome was handled in a slightly more compelling way in Shrek 2, Kung Fu Panda's depiction of it is still really strong. Poe pretty much experiences the textbook definition of it. After mm -hmm. Uguay chooses him to be the dragon warrior seemingly by accident, he's suddenly thrust into a prominent position, surrounded by people he perceives as being much more capable and deserving of his title. But Poe's strength as a character is his unbridled enthusiasm and optimism. He doesn't initially doubt he can be the dragon warrior, he just assumes that first Shifu needs to train him to fill that role. And so he refuses to quit, taking Hell beating yeah. after beating, but still staying for more because he believes he can do it. Initially, he's pushing through the imposter syndrome, but that doesn't mean it isn't still there. One of my favorite scenes is when he accidentally barges into Crane's room at night. And like, Crane's trying to be courteous and nice, despite the fact that he trained his entire life to reach a yeah. certain position, and then it was just given to some random panda Little that awkward. fell right out of the sky. But then Crane blurts out, you don't belong here which Poe interprets as the same thing his imposter syndrome has been telling him deep down. That he doesn't belong here at the Jade Palace, training alongside his idols he could never hope to live up to. He expresses his reluctant agreement with what Crane said, but Crane feels bad about this and backpedals, <laughs> saying he was just talking about not belonging in his room. So Poe leaves, a little embarrassed, but mostly relieved. And then Tigress opens her doors to say the same thing, you don't belong here. Poe interprets this the same way Crane apparently meant it, that he doesn't belong in her room. And then she proceeds to clarify that she doesn't think he belongs yeah. here, at the palace. I, lo I love her eyes. Alongside they, the masters, how they glow in the and dark. And that he should leave if he has any respect for them. The fact that she specifically said, you don't belong here, after Crane did, implies that she could hear their conversation, <laughs> and that she specifically chose the words I mean, that would- those are some pretty thin walls. Artist. It's such a great scene for establishing not only Poe's naivete and earnestness, but also how ruthless and blunt Tigress yeah. is, especially compared to the rest of the five, who keep their frustrations and disappointment inside. While we're on the subject, I just like how the five are written in general, and how distinct all their positions are on Poe. They're admittedly not the most fleshed out in this first movie, Yeah. Or any of the other yeah but they all express differing opinions on poe through their dialogue they get Tigris more in the show apparently frustrated with him and isn't afraid to share that fact mantis and monkey aren't afraid to crack jokes at his expense and viper and crane are more compassionate and concerned about his well-being <laughs> there's also some solid growth where we get to see them gradually warm up to him over time 
Yeah. But we're not there yet. Right now, Poe has been thoroughly ratioed by Tigris, and his imposter syndrome is taking head. over. Mm. He tells Uguay about how much he sucked today, and how much the five hate him, and how he thinks he should just quit and go back to making noodles. But Uguay comes in clutch with the sage wisdom he's known for, essentially telling him to put this day behind him and keep moving forward. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow Probably one of the best mystery, quotes ever in any animated film, gift. in my opinion. That is why it is called the present. So Poe takes the film in general, if I'm being honest. Through his imposter syndrome. He pushes through an intensely rigorous day of training specifically designed to get him to quit. He consistently fails, but he refuses to give up in the hopes that he can live up to the expectations thrust upon him. And the five start to take notice. Minus mm -hmm. Tigris, of course. But the rest of them start to bond with him, performing acupuncture on him to uh, heal his it's wounds, so good. admiring his cooking, and joking around with him at dinner. <laughs> and for these brief moments, Poe finally gets to know what it feels like to belong alongside his idols. But it doesn't last. Mm -hmm. Word comes in that Tai Lung has broken out of prison and is on his way. And Poe doesn't take this news well. <laughs> And this, God, right here, Jack this Black is the is scene so where all of it so just funny. comes out. All of Poe's insecurities and frustrations he's kept bottled up inside for so long. He admits that he would rather be verbally and physically berated by Shifu while trying and failing to learn Kung Fu because he prefers it over every day of his life just being himself. Aww. He held out hope that Shifu could train him to be the Dragon Warrior, completely changing himself in the process. But now, he sees this as an impossible task, and challenges Shifu to prove otherwise, which Shifu isn't sure how to do. And it's like, fuck, man. Imagine being this discontent <sighs> with your life and who you are, God. only to suddenly get a chance to live and train alongside your heroes, believing this is it. This is your dream come true. This is your chance to be the kind of person you've always wanted to be. But everyone seems to hate you, especially the person who's supposed to be your mentor, your guide through this vast new world you're otherwise unprepared for. And not only do you not have guidance or friends, but you're the same person you were when you started. You can't live up to these crushing expectations and become this entirely new, capable person you expected to be by now. It's honestly soul-crushing, but it's what Poe has to go through. But Poe eventually overcomes this, yeah. thanks in no small part he to does. Shifu overcoming his biases about <laughs> Poe. We'll get to that in a bit. Before I discuss the resolution yeah, Shifu of needs his own arc, section. I think it's about time we talk some more about Tai Lung. Yeah, we're not really supposed to talk about him. God damn it. I'll kill you. Tai Lung is, in my opinion, a far more fascinating antagonist than a lot of people give him credit for. I actually slightly like him better than Lord Shen from the sequel. They're both surprisingly compelling villains, but I think the sheer ferocity of Tai Lung, on top of his super dramatic story, mm -hmm. is what puts him over the edge for me. Like I said before, his fight scenes are phenomenal, and we got a sense of how animalistic and powerful he is in the prison break scene, since he manages to pull Boom. off all of these feats without speaking a single word. He's like the Kung Fu Panda version <laughs> of Darth Maul, giving us an intense, silent action scene first, on top of a rich dramatic characterization later on. The only difference is Not in the we movie. get both of these in the span of one yeah. movie, rather than it being in one movie and a TV show 10 years after the fact. So shortly after his prison break, we get to hear Tai Lung's backstory recounted to us by Tigris. She is essentially just using it to make Poe feel worse about himself, so it has a purpose to the narrative while also giving us, the audience, exposition. Coolio. Essentially, Shifu raised Tai Lung as his son training him in kung fu and telling him he was destined for greatness, to be the dragon warrior. However, mm, Uwe refused to let this happen due to the darkness he saw in Tai Lung's heart. Tai Lung was outraged and laid waste to the valley, trying to take the scroll for himself, all as Shifu remained emotionally powerless to stop the boy he raised. After Ugwe took Tai Lung mm. down and sent him off to prison, Shifu was heartbroken and never truly recovered from this. He it's, never it's, loved another protege in the I same mean, yeah, way as he did Tai traumatizing. Lung. Presumably not only because he didn't want to raise their hopes too high like he did before, but also because he was too afraid to express genuine care for anyone else, lest he run the risk of getting his heart shattered all over again. It's a fairly standard but incredibly well-executed bit of backstory <laughs> for both Tai Lung and Shifu. 
And more than anything else, God, it's so it well executed. sets up their inevitable confrontation yeah. towards the end of the film. This is without a doubt my favorite scene in the movie. Mm -hmm. Not just because it's a cool I shit agree. fight scene, but because it's the perfect conclusion of both characters' storylines. Tai Lung calls his old master, his father figure, out for abandoning him and denying him the title of Dragon Warrior once Ugwe said no. And even though he's not the true Dragon Warrior, he's not wrong in pointing out how messed up it is for Shifu to get his hopes up mm -hmm. all those years. To train him God, until such his a compelling character. Only for him to find and out. And Ian does such a good job. Was for nothing. The truth so does it often, man. Character is that you uh, can see exactly I'm how still, she I'm still a little mad that he has a name drop how Dustin Hoffman. His praise was translated into arrogance. How his insistence in Tai Lung's destiny as the Dragon Warrior resulted in a genuine betrayal when it turned out Shifu was wrong. The scars mm. of Shifu's failure continued to haunt him for years, resulting in him never truly being able to love another of his protégés. He suffered, his future students suffered, but most of all, Tai Lung suffered. He sealed his fate by succumbing to his rage, but ultimately, it was Shifu's well-intentioned but deeply misguided kindling of Tai Lung's ego that caused him to turn out as evil as he did. It's why, after a verbal confrontation and a fight with incredible art direction and <laughs> intensely dramatic shots, like seriously, why does this movie go so hard Holy for real? Crap. We get this last moment between them, the where fire. Tai Lung mockingly demands to know how proud of him Shifu is. And Shifu solemnly expresses how proud he was, and how his pride blinded him from what he was turning Tai mm. Lung into. The power in this scene derives from Shifu fully taking responsibility for ruining Tai Lung's life with empty promises, and finally telling Tai Lung he's sorry. And this one reaction shot of Tai Lung, God. this right here, that's the best shit in the whole film. It's the look of someone who, despite all the evil they've done, has nonetheless been genuinely touched by the apology. The acknowledgement of negligent wrongdoing that set them down this dark path that they never expected to receive. You even see his eyes start to well up before he realizes he's gone too far to turn back now and insists that he doesn't want Shifu's apology. But the eyes don't lie. Hearing a parent admit that they failed you instead of blaming you for your own shortcomings <sighs> is some pretty powerful stuff. Mm. And it's especially rare to hear in a movie for kids. Getting choked up him and just yet, talking about it, man. Tai Lung is too far gone, too consumed by his hatred, and too entrenched in the pursuit of the power he was wrongfully promised. He wants his scroll. Ima imagine an alternate reality where the filmmakers decided to make Tai Lung a good guy. I wonder, I wonder how that would have turned out. Masco X, you, you do all those what if Raditz was a good guy storylines. How about you do one for if Tai Lung was a good guy? So Poe shows up and they fight over it and blah, blah, blah. Other cool thematic stuff is revealed through their contrast. <laughs> yeah. Just at the scroll or something. Blah, blah, blah. Let's discuss. There is no sauce. Now that we've covered Poe and Tai Lung's journeys over the course of the film, it's time to bring it all home and compare their reactions oh, to getting what they've God. always wanted. The source of limitless power, the Dragon Scroll. Okay, so before we get to that, there's a really good scene earlier in the movie with Ugwe, which I know is kind of a redundant sentence because every single scene with Ugwe <laughs> yeah. is automatically really good. But it's I a mean, scene where on. Ugwe tells Shifu that he needs to let go of the illusion of control. Shifu has tried in vain to train Poe the usual way, to implement the same level of control that he had during the training of Tai Lung in The Furious Five. And it hasn't worked out. Bonk. But through this clutch ass peach tree metaphor, Ugwe lets Shifu know that he needs to be patient. He can't make a peach tree blossom when it suits him, nor bear fruit before it's time. But Shifu's like, well, actually, I can control where the fruit will fall and where I plant the seed. So Birdly. you're wrong, plus ratio, plus you fell off. And Ugwe's like, you silly head. That plant is always gonna be a peach. You may wish for an apple or an orange. But you will get a peach, and a peach can defeat Tai Lung, if you believe in it. You just gotta believe! Oh my god, what the fuck? And the music is fucking phenomenal. Hans Zimmer and Hans John Zimmer, Powell baby. really pop the fuck 
off and contribute to one of the most beautiful moments in the entire trilogy. Everyone loves this scene, and I'd be remiss to not mention it at some point. Mm. After this, we get that scene where Poe finally lets all his insecurities out to Shifu, and then the next day, we see Poe accidentally performing some advanced kung fu maneuvers in order to get food. <laughs> Except, there are no accidents. Are there? <laughs> Shifu finally well understands the meaning of Ugwe's thrice repeated message, and this is how <laughs> it finally clicks for him that he can train Poe by meeting the panda on his own wavelength and instructing him in a way he'll actually respond to with food. God, I'm fucking hungry. <laughs> it's almost like different people learn differently or something. That's and a trying good... to standardize a method of learning yeah. will inevitably leave certain students behind. Hmm. I am going to send the CEO of the American school system a DVD copy of Kung Fu Panda Education. so they can see what a fucking idiot they are. Sorry, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this is the first indication of the potency of the movie's message. Kinda which like, essentially uh, boils down to Rainbow Dash had an episode for that too. You special. Where she it's learned a pretty standard message how to Zone. But the way it's presented in this movie study for really a test does in our own feel way. fresh and unique. Poe's distinct love of food, his Whoa. round physique, and his boundless optimism against all odds all come in handy for him as he manages to beat his master in a kung fu dumpling battle. And then after winning the dumpling, he says he's not hungry. A subtle callback to Tigris saying the dragon warrior can survive for long periods of time without eating. Or maybe he just didn't want to eat the dumpling because it was bouncing around everywhere and it's probably really gross now. That's <laughs> yeah. probably the reason. I'm trying to watch my calorie intake. Either way, yeah. we've seen Poe go from complete embarrassing novice to someone who's actually pretty capable in the art of kung fu. All because Shifu adapted his training method to what worked best for Poe and what brought out Poe's unique inner strengths. And after the five return home, and even defeated, Shifu starts having it becomes fun. It's clear that in order to beat Tai Lung, it's time for Poe to learn the secrets of the Dragon Scroll and become immortal. But upon opening it, what the fuck? Yep, this bitch empty. <laughs> Eat. Everyone is justifiably mm. really confused and scared, since they all believe that Poe is no match for Tai Lung without the sort of supernatural power so, they assume was the scroll would Uke give. Was actually just like a, a crazy guy? Reasonable assumption. Tai Lung seems utterly unstoppable, and if the Furious Five couldn't beat him, how can Poe do it without any special ability? So they evacuate the valley, and Poe returns home to Noodle Dad James Hong, who sees how upset Poe oh, is and tries to cheer him up by telling him the secret so ingredient awesome. of his secret ingredient soup. And it's also nothing. nothing. There's no need for any sort of special sauce or secret ingredient, because to make something special, you just have to believe it's special. Like Ugwe did when he selected <laughs> Poe and insisted it was no accident. Like Shifu did when he finally put his preconceived notions about Poe aside and trained him in the way that brought out his special attributes. Character and now development. it's time for Poe to come full circle. Let go of his doubts, deny his imposter syndrome, and <laughs> finally tell himself that yes, he does deserve the title of the Dragon Warrior. He stuck with his passion, he put in the work, and he earned the title that no one, not even he, thought he could live up to. If his dad can make plain old noodle soup taste unbelievably amazing, then why can't he, a big fat panda, become the legendary kung fu master yeah, he course. always aspired to be? You motherfucker! So Poe arrives to save Shifu we and do battle with Tai Lung, keeping the Dragon Scroll out of his hands up. by utilizing the unconventional abilities that make him special. Oh. A perfect reflection of everything he's learned throughout his training process. <laughs> Ultimately, however, Tai Lung knocks him down and finally seizes the scroll for himself, opening it up to once again reveal... Nothing. nothing. He's obviously shocked, you lose. but Poe gently day, explains sir. the scroll's meaning to him. How there's no secret ingredient, and that it's just him. And where Poe found the power to believe in his own strength through this revelation, Tai Lung just can't do that. His entire life, he believed in the promise of greater power. Some sort of ability the scroll would bestow upon him in order to make him truly unstoppable. His rejection of the true nature of the Dragon Scroll speaks to his inability to accept his true self and come to terms with who he truly is, as Poe has. By pushing past his self-doubt and returning to fight Tai Lung without any quote-unquote mystical power in tow, <laughs> Poe proved himself to be the true Dragon Warrior. 
and by rejecting the scroll's message as it was explained by Poe, Tai Lung proved that the title of Dragon Warrior is something he could never live up to. He instead relentlessly attacks Poe, ultimately failing to defeat him due to a combination of Poe's unique special attributes. He's too flabby for Tai Lung's nerve attacks to do any damage, something that was foreshadowed earlier when yeah. Mantis couldn't find his nerves while doing fur. acupuncture. I was gonna say Poe fur. also uses his girth to knock Tai Lung around in unconventional ways, and ultimately finishes with the iconic Wuxi finger hold, something he picked up the knowledge of through his insane levels of dedication and passion to the art of Kung Fu. <laughs> Skadoosh, indeed. God. I guess according to the third movie, all this did was send Tai Lung to the spirit realm. But I kind of like the eight years of bliss where we thought Poe literally just murdered Tai Lung. That's just me, though. I mean, spirit the, realm, is... the spirit realm is pretty much heaven, so we can't... potato, potato. So wholesome and rewarding. It's so great to hear the five, most of whom belittled him over the course of the movie, finally showing their respect and calling him master. It's so great to see Shifu finally find inner peace, with the mistake he made with Tai Lung finally resolved now that he trains the true Dragon Warrior. There's even a cute, imaginative 2D credit sequence, with a similar art style to the opening dream sequence of the movie. And a post credit scene? I literally did not know this movie had a post credit scene until this year when <laughs> I started working on this video. Who knew? I wonder it's if really this cute. video will have a post credit scene. The answer is no, but let's move on to the oh, conclusion. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good ass movie. Is it possible for a critically acclaimed blockbuster that spawned an entire franchise to be a bit underrated? Because that's how I feel about Kung Fu Panda. I mean, kind it's of. It's obviously still talked about and still beloved by a ton of animation fans. But I feel like not enough people give credit to how artistically special it is under the surface of its goofy premise and silly jokes. <laughs> it legitimately stands as one of the most impressive animated action films ever made. At the very least, it's definitely got the best action in DreamWorks entire catalog even outdoing its two sequels in this department. Boom! It also offers compelling character drama for both its hero and villain, wonderful music, excellent art direction, good humor, just pretty much everything you could ever want in Pretty a much movie. everything. I'm sure you've already seen it before, but maybe give it a rewatch, because it holds up exceptionally well, and I would love to see more people discuss its dramatic strengths. Speaking of dramatic strengths, you better believe I'm going to talk about Kung Fu Panda 2 sooner or later. Yeah. That's a movie I absolutely have no trouble calling underrated. So I'll make sure to react to that, that one too. And then I guess I'll talk about 3 as well. I mean, sure, why not? Good night, Valley of Peace. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> oh, wow, thank you. Thank you, Scaife, once more for shedding light on I, I hesitate to call this film underrated honestly because i feel like people still talk about it enough like i mean it's not i, I feel if you want to talk about something underrated in a dreamworks film like captain underpants i i could make a whole video essay about that and how underrated that one is and for a lot of the same reasons you wouldn't expect it to be as good as it is and and it uses a lot of fart humor where this film does not but it's just executed in such a special way but but back back to this film yeah just fa fantastic fantastic analysis like it covered pretty much all the bases you could ask for could, well, the action the humor the voice actors the music the themes yeah just Duh. i'm really glad that this is one of the movies that i grew up on and i don't think we'll really have another film quite like it which makes it even more special if you ask me and um, I mean, hey, it, it was no accident that DreamWorks managed to come out with something like this, despite their previous repertoire. And it really did just go, it just goes to show that they're willing to experiment and try anything. Uh, whether or not it hits or misses, uh, it, it just, it, you never know. You, you never know. So thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all liked the video as much as I did. And be sure to stay tuned for the next video. Take care.